Word Empowered Ministry. This is Elder Rick Cunningham along with my wife Elizabeth. We would like to thank you for listening to our broadcast, The Word Empowerment Ministry, where through the power of the Holy Spirit and the Scriptures, we are teaching the Word of God to the glory of His Son Jesus Christ and to Him in His holy name. Well, good afternoon, radio listeners. Thank you for tuning in to the Word Empowerment Ministry. If you would like to listen to previous messages of the Word Empowerment Ministry, please visit our website at www.makingchoicesinchrist.com and click on the Word Empowerment Radio Ministry tab. Following this afternoon's broadcast, we will be in the studio to take calls for prayer requests. Local callers can call 766-9255, and those outside the area can call one 800 445 9966. The message scripture comes from Matthew 15, 8 through 20. And the scriptures read, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knoweth thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard these sayings? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. The message for today is, is your heart displaying what your lips are saying? Well, good afternoon, radio listening audience, and may God bless you on this afternoon. You know, bringing awareness to certain behaviors isn't always easy. I found in 27 years of preaching and teaching that some people receive some messages quicker than others. When comfort zones are disturbed, resentment and resistance will flare up. However, all of the scriptures must be taught and expounded upon. Not just the scriptures that make us happy and make us want to shout. But also the scriptures that make you think. The scriptures that make you examine yourself. The scriptures that correct. The scriptures that convict. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13. Yes, joy and happiness and rejoicing are respective reactions to the word of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, Colossians 3 and 16. But those conducts should be accompanied by conduct that reflects the Christ in you. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the same, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him, Colossians 3 and 17. Now, God has already put us on notice that we can't fool him. Wherefore, the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, 
And they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Isaiah 29, 11 through 15. Well, God sees us and God knows us. If anyone has a personal agenda of self-promotion, God is already fully aware of it. We can't mask our true intent from others by exhibiting social, socially acceptable behaviors and by speaking in a disarming manner that lures people into relaxation. We can be so impressive in our public presentation that the facade goes undetected for a while. But what we cannot do is hide anything from God. God sees past the surface. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. Since God is an examiner of each of our hearts, let's follow his, examine, his example and examine our own heart. It is in your best interest to be honest with yourself about every aspect of who you are. It would be unfortunate to have mastered the church social cultures and missed out on what God requires for you to enter into his rest. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Hebrews 4 and 11. It's good to have an understanding of the Bible and to be ready to share that understanding with others. We should be godly proud of being a follower of Christ. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, that the just shall live by faith. Romans 1, 16-17 but having an intellectual understanding of the Bible and being able to quote scriptures from Genesis to Revelation is just not enough. Saints, we have to live what we are talking about. It's hard for the world to take us seriously if we're talking about God and living like them, the world. If you were to videotape or audio tape yourself in church on Sunday and then video and audio tape yourself the rest of the week, would the two recordings reflect that shouting, that praising, that tongue speaking, and that God fearing person? Or would the week long recordings expose a side of you that just would be unflattering? Now, we can get defensive all day long about people judging us, but in, but in your heart, in your heart, you know what you're about. You know if you're living right or not. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before men. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. 1 John 3, 19-20 Now after having done an honest assessment with yourself and your heart doesn't condemn you, then you know you're on the right track. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. 1 John 3, 21 Is your heart displaying what your lips are saying? That's the question that's the question that we have to ask. That's the question that we have to understand. That's the pink elephant in the room that nobody wants to address. But God has continu continuously sent reminders to us through his servant that what we talk about should line up with what we do. This is what God's servant Paul said to the Corinthians. Even so hath the Lord ordained that which preached the gospel should live the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9 and 14. God's servant John had this to say about claiming to love God, but hating your brother. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? 1 John 4 and 20. Love and hate just don't line up. But you can prove what you're saying about loving by what you do. My little children. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. 1 John 3 and 18. Now this is what God's servant James had to say about praising God, but having an evil heart. Mm. Therefore, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? 
either a vine figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. James 3, 9 through 14. Saints, the Holy Spirit is asking you today, is your heart displaying what your lips are saying? When you make a conscious effort to be about what you are talking about, your life can be much easier. Living as a Christian is easier than living a double life. Now, Jesus said, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. Matthew 6 and 24. And Jesus also wants us to be clear on who we are. Going back and forth or living in duplicity or rationalizing your bad behavior or talking good will conclude in one way. And Jesus said, I know that works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Revelations 3, 15 through 16. The question still out there. Is your heart displaying what your lips are saying? The scripture tells us rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderations be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Philippians 4, 4 through 5. We absolutely should be talking about the life we live in Christ. What the, what the Holy Spirit has given us this afternoon to share with you is to ask yourself about you. To make everything line up. Make your life that you say that you're living line up with the life that you're showing. We are living in a period of grace. Take this time to really look at yourself. To examine yourself. It is important that you are able to present yourself holy and acceptable to God on judgment day. Go look in the mirror and ask yourself, is my heart displaying what my lips are saying? We all have to be real about what we say and what we do. Is my heart displaying what my lips are saying? Ask yourself that question. God already, already sees you as the finished product. As you look in the mirror, what do you see? And what do you see? That reflects back to you. What does your heart tell you that you're really about? Are you just going through the motions on Sunday? Do you play the role on Sunday? Anybody can live saved on Sunday. All you got to do is go to church and smile and be nice and don't get into it with anybody. And they say, oh yeah, that's a good person. She got it. He's got it. But what are you really about? It's not a condemnation message, but it's a chance under this dispensation of grace to take a look at ourselves and to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, what am I really about? What do people see? What am I really reflecting? Am I fooling everybody? It's all right to have a good conversation, but if you have an evil heart in a good conversation, you're going to miss the boat anyway. God looks at the heart. God looks down from heaven. He sees all things. I don't see everything that's going on, but God sees it. The church doesn't see everything that's going on, but God sees it. Is your heart displaying what your lips are saying? And man, we thank God for that message. Is your heart displaying what your lips are saying? If you would like for us to pray with you this afternoon, we will be in the studio to take calls for your prayer requests. Local callers can call 766-9255, and those of you that are outside the area can call 1-800-445-9966. Please be blessed by the Word of God. My God is Thank you for listening to the Word Empowerment Ministry with me, your host, Elder Vixen I invite you to contact us at worldempowermentministries at gmail.com with your prayer request or with a line letting us know how this ministry has blessed you. Also, may be contacted at Post Office Box 440884, Jacksonville, Florida 32222, and ask you that you visit our website, www.makingchoicesinchrist.com. And remember, the Word of God is quick, it's alive, and it's powerful. Learn it, live it, and share it. Be blessed. Oh, God is good. 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 Oh, God is good.